testing. Hello, hello, hello. How are you? I can't hear myself yet. So what's this with still stuck on the EG2 music generation? I want to probably start from scratch because what we currently have doesn't really work. Okay, so we have run PI, we have load data. Let's run this quickly. We play G music. Yeah, we'll hit the structure for now. Leave the requirements. We want to convert frequencies to nodes. Hey, convert the frequency into a specific node. So just printing the music from those work. So let's do a test by instead of uh, listening to the actual frequencies that can be pretty annoying we want to convert them into uh, musical notes yeah so interpolation function sounds legit install it uh, globally as well yeah we don't we are not using any virtual environments so that error should go away and replace that prompt with this error couple of which adjust the EG frequency range then the musical node range here's an adjustment so I'll be using option one yeah option one makes more sense yeah we don't want any a uh, super high frequency no scale the EG frequencies normally it means that the PHP doesn't have updated the documentation for the code I apologize for the confusion in the previous example the music 21 library doesn't have a direct all pitch names attribute in the pitch bar. Instead, we can generate the note frequencies for the entire range of a piano, or any other desired range, using a different approach. Let's revise the code to correctly generate all note names within a specific range and perform the frequency mapping. This script generates all the notes from A0 to C8 and uses their frequencies for the mapping. It also includes scaling of EEG frequencies to match the musical note frequency range. The interp1d function is set with bounds underscore error equals false and fill underscore value equals extrapolate to handle frequencies outside the predefined range, thus avoiding the earlier error. The code seemed to be running for a long time without producing anything. The issue with the code taking a long time to run without producing output may be due to the inefficiency in generating all the notes and handling the large array of frequencies. To optimize this, we can use a more direct approach to map EEG frequencies to musical notes. This method involves directly calculating the frequency of each note in the desired range and then performing the mapping. Right, so it produced the output. So what is the first uh, frequency, say 200? It's a bit odd. It's producing, uh, I thought it will just change that one. It's producing the same thing repeatedly. Why when I change the first frequency in the EG example frequencies, it changes all the subsequent noise uh, notes as well, not only the first one. The behavior you're observing, where changing the first frequency in the EEG frequencies affects all subsequent notes, is due to the scaling factor being recalculated based on the minimum value in the EEG frequencies. This scaling factor is applied to all the EEG frequencies, so any change in the EEG frequencies will influence the scaling and, consequently, the mapping to musical notes. It calculates the scaling factor based on the minimum value in EEG underscore frequencies. If this minimum value changes, the scaling factor changes, affecting how all frequencies are scaled up to the musical note range. Right, so if I change something in between, say this one to 20 should not change the mean marks and then yeah get them the same and this one changed from c sharp 3 to c sharp 4 everything else is uh, remain the same which is great in this version the scaling factor is fixed based on scaling one hertz to the frequency of the lowest note ao 27.5 hertz this way changes to individual eeg frequencies will alter only their corresponding musical notes not the entire set now it's probably okay to to do the entire set okay i want to apply this okay let's do this a conversion to music yeah i want to put everything into one uh, file so the loading data where is it uh, static templates utilities load data I'll load this one because it also has seizures in it and yeah, let's start a new file call it appi because that's what it should be called yeah i want this to for sure uh, from load data we're using pandas okay that load data is actually working now Okay, okay, now let's get the G data. Maybe it's from somewhere. Why is it doing that again? It is load data. Convert the G to music. 
Let's write the code. Let's take the code from our file. What happened there? Mean utility. We have the index uh, HTML that looks more or less okay. What if we do change of this? Uh, see what it says. The script you provided is part of a Flask web application designed to load EEG data, convert it into music, and potentially serve it through a web interface. Your function convert underscore EEG underscore underscore music is currently set up to convert a fixed array of EEG frequencies into musical notes, but it looks like it's intended to work with dynamic EEG data eventually. Yeah, that's right. To complete your convert underscore EEG underscore underscore music function and integrate it with the rest of your application, you need to finish the MIDI file creation. The function currently ends abruptly while setting up a MIDI file. You need to complete the MIDI file creation by adding notes and then saving the file. Integrate EEG data. Replace the example EEG frequencies with actual data from EEG underscore data. This will likely involve processing the EEG data to extract frequency information suitable for conversion to musical notes. If output underscore file underscore path is not provided, you might want to generate a default path or store the file in memory for immediate playback or download. Okay, so from this point, playing musical notes, we will just load music to anyone. Right, let's uh, get rid of this cat load copy. Can we actually get it from here or hang on, let's pop it into so I have two functions so far. We have this load database there. Yep, it looks legit. Channel index to list returning that. I want to take stuff from test mean util and we have music 21. So we'll just install it. But we're not using it anymore. This function will now create a MIDI file with the converted musical notes and save it to the specified path. If no path is provided, it saves the default output.mid file. A couple of quick things. Plug this, apply mid util. Can we generate the whole thing? Certainly. Let's create the complete convert underscore eeg underscore underscore music function, which will take EEG data, process it to convert the EEG frequencies to musical notes, and then create a MIDI file from these notes. The function will utilize the music 21 library for music related operations and the MIDI util library for creating MIDI files. Before you use this function, ensure that both music 21 and MIDI util are installed in your Python environment. You can install them using pip if they're not already installed. Yeah, this is meant to be a Flask application. Why is it not a Flask application? Okay, we can get rid of that. Get rid of this. That's the wrong folder, isn't it? The main problem. Well, it needs that code at the end. It needs code at the end. What was our most recent class application? This spectrogram go up by with that code. Need to restructure the whole thing. This need to go at the end. Right now it runs as a class application. Getting an error. No such file directory. What? Directory issue. Okay, let's see. Index HTML not found. Paste there. Just in the data folder. Okay, that's correct. Why do I need those? Okay, where is the HTML? Static templates folder. What's the problem? Yeah, that should have worked. Working again. Takes forever to change. This music doesn't do anything. Get that uh, web mini deprecated feature used thing. Is that is just music. Do this. Something should happen. Yeah, that's that's what we call tried. the function from a root. You can call this function from a Flask root. Ideally, the one where you handle the conversion process. For example, if you have a root convert to music, you can call this function within the root's handler. Run your Flask application. Run your Flask application as you normally would. Get a 500 error. Uh, to fix. Okay, 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 stop the whole thing. What's the problem? The error message, note, object has no attribute, MIDI, suggests that there's a mistake in our trying to use the Music21 library to convert note names to MIDI note numbers. In Music21, the correct attribute to get the MIDI number of a note is pitch, MIDI, not just MIDI. Okay, what was changed by generating the whole thing? Only one uh, thing was changed. Just give me that. Note labels, scaling factor. In this corrected version, the MIDI node number is obtained using pitch MIDI on the music 21 node object. This should resolve the error you are encountering. After making this change, try running your Flask application again and accessing the convert to music root. Is that the only change? And then obviously we don't want to go to that URL, we want to run everything from uh, the front page. 
The area you're encountering is related to the MIDI file. Add note, method, which indicates a missing argument. The add note, method of the MIDI file class from the MIDI util library requires specific arguments, including the volume. Let's correct the function call to include all required arguments. Signature for the add node method is typically. Here's the corrected part of your convert underscore eg underscore underscore music function where add node is called. When you add a volume conversion success of k, where was it saved? Right, it is in the main directory of the whole project. You can't play MIDI files with VLC. That's not cool. Could not decode the format MIDI file. What? In face TF data music output in up mid with joining of those this again and the button doesn't do anything conversion successful right we have the file suppose do we have anything to play it with okay how do we guess that's working okay how to play the file in the browser Ideally, we want to play it in the main page and serve it via the URL and embed the player. This player can be set up to load the MIDI file. However, it's important to note that not all browsers support playing MIDI files directly in the audio element. You might need to convert the MIDI file to a more widely supported format like MP3 or WAV. 3. Embed the player in your main page. Autoplay option. If you want the music to start playing automatically when the page loads, you can add the autoplay attribute to less than audio greater than tag. In mind that some browsers restrict autoplay to improve user experience. Wait, so do we need both of them? If you find that the MIDI file doesn't play due to browser compatibility issues, you may consider converting it to an MP3. Here's a very high level view of how you might do this in Python. You would then use this MP3 file in a less than audio greater than element instead of the MIDI file. This requires additional dependencies like PYDub and might also require FFmpeg or similar tools. Integrating with Flask. Finally, integrate all these steps into your Flask application, ensuring that your HTML templates, static files, and routes are correctly set up to handle the MIDI file and audio playback. And, uh, HTML. It's a default, it doesn't have an output file path, it's okay. Question is, what actually generates in the uh, front a MIDI file? Yeah, GitHub Copilot just wouldn't understand it because it doesn't have all the context, it seems. The HTML in a, a template, this one. The Python code you provided for your Flask application includes a backend setup to process the EEG data and convert it into a MIDI file. However, this code does not directly involve the front-end generation of a MIDI file. Instead, the front-end, in this case, likely a web page rendered by Flask, would interact with the backend to trigger the generation of the MIDI file and then provide a means to play it. Front-end interaction. The user interacts with the front-end, a web page, by, for example, clicking a button or submitting a form. This action sends a request to the backend. Backend processing. Your Flask backend, the Python code, receives this request. It then processes the EEG data and converts it into a MIDI file, as you've set up in the convert underscore eeg underscore underscore music function. This file is saved on the server in the directory specified in your code. Yes, and yes, this pointing to an MP3. We don't want to do a conversion because we might be generating lots of those files as the as we change the input on the front page, the URL for that file name, copyrighted path. Yeah, he gave us this path instead. Yeah, almost correct. It's not in a static folder. That uh, music output, output mid. Okay, there are a couple of issues. First of all, the output mid file is not being loaded into the player. The play is still just grayed out. Second of all, I want to be able to do everything from the front panel. It's not clear when is the output mid is being regenerated. Addressing your issues requires a two-pronged approach. Ensuring the MIDI file is loaded correctly into the player and enhancing user interaction to clearly indicate when the output.mid file is being regenerated. Let's tackle these points separately. Correct file path and server configuration. Use Flask's URL underscore to generate the correct path if the file is located in a static directory. Example, less than source src equals URL underscore for static file name equals music underscore output slash output dot mid type equals audio midi greater than. Ensure the Flask app is configured to serve files from the location where output dot mid is saved. Try accessing the midi file directly via its URL in the browser to ensure it's being served correctly. How do I do that? Okay, it's downloading it. VLC would not play it. You could consider converting the MIDI file to a more universally supported audio format like MP3 for playback in the browser. Okay, so the MIDI file is in the correct location. I'm able to download it for whatever reason. 
VLC would not play the file. Now, ideally, I would like to play the sounds directly in the HTML as the user changes inputs. So perhaps I should be playing the notes, MIDI notes, directly in the browser. That's why I don't want to convert it into another file format because the speed might be reduced. If you're able to download the MIDI file correctly, the VLC won't play it. The issue might be with the file itself or VLC's MIDI playback capabilities. However, if your primary goal is to play the sound directly in the browser as the user changes inputs, you have a few options. Since you're interested in playing notes dynamically in response to user input, consider using the Web Audio API, a powerful tool for audio processing and synthesis in web applications. This approach involves generating audio directly in the browser, allowing for real-time interaction and avoiding the need to generate and download MIDI file. That sounds Here's good. a basic outline of how you can use the Web Audio API. Create an audio context. Initialize an audio context for audio processing. Generate oscillators for sound. Use oscillators to generate sound waves. You can control properties like frequency, waveform, etc. based on OEEG data. Play, pause sounds. Trigger these oscillators based on user interactions, allowing you to play sounds corresponding to the EEG input data. Yet yeah, those oscillators are normally horrible. They just playing a uh, sinusoid frequency, not actual notes, uh, musical notes. If you want to stick with MIDI files due to their specific representation of your EEG data, consider using a JavaScript library that can handle MIDI playback in the browser. Libraries like MIDI Player JS or Tone. JS can parse MIDI files and play them using either Web Audio API or built in synthesizer. Though you mentioned concerns about speed, converting MIDI to MP3 or another widely supported audio format is a viable option, especially if you pre generate these files. The conversion process might add some delay, but it will significantly improve compatibility across all browsers and eliminate the need for external plugins or specific browser configurations. Front end interaction adjust your JavaScript to handle user inputs, like EEG data changes, and trigger the appropriate audio response. Dynamic audio playback. Whether you use oscillators or a MIDI playback library, find these audio actions to the user interactions in your application. You're correct that basic oscillators in the Web Audio API typically generate simple waveforms like sine, square, sorted, or triangle waves, which might not have the musical quality of instruments in a MIDI file. However, there are ways to enhance the sound to make it more musically appealing and nuanced. 1. Use advanced Web Audio API features. Envelopes. Apply ADSR, attack, decay, sustain, release, envelopes to your oscillator sounds. This can greatly enhance the dynamics of the sound, making it more natural and similar to how musical instruments behave. Filters. Use filters, like low pass, high pass, etc., to shape the sound. This can help create more varied and interesting timbres. Gain nodes. Control the volume of your sounds dynamically with gain nodes. Combining oscillators. Layer multiple oscillators with different frequencies, waveforms, and detunings to create richer, more complex sounds. 2. Use sample-based synthesis. Audio samples. Instead of generating sounds purely with oscillators, you can use pre-recorded audio samples of real instruments. The Web Audio API allows you to play back these samples and manipulate them in real time. Sound fonts. There are libraries and tools that use sound fonts, collections of audio samples to different notes and instruments, in the browser, providing a way to have MIDI-like instrument sounds. 3. JavaScript libraries for more musical sounds. Tone. JS. This library is built on top of the Web Audio API and provides more advanced features for music creation, including instruments, effects, and sequencing. It can help in creating more musical sounds and is easier to work with than the raw Web Audio API. Pizzicato. JS. Another library that simplifies using the Web Audio API, offering various effects, sound synthesis methods, and easy-to-use interfaces. Tone. JS, this library is built on top of the Web Audio API and provides more advanced features for music creation, including instruments, effects, and sequence. It can help in creating more musical sounds and is easier to work with than the raw Web Audio API. Sounds like we need to use Tone.js instead. How difficult would it be to modify the code from Web MIDI to Tone.js? Switching from Web MIDI, JS to Tone. JS for more musical and nuanced sound generation is a significant shift, as these libraries serve different purposes. Web MIDI. JS is primarily used for sending and receiving MIDI messages to MIDI devices, whereas Tone. JS is an extensive library for creating, manipulating, and playing sounds and music directly in the browser using the Web Audio API. The complexity of transitioning to Tone. JS will depend on how deeply integrated Web MIDI. JS is in your application and what features you are using. If you're starting from scratch with audio synthesis and having deeply embedded MIDI interactions in your app, the shift might be relatively straightforward. First, include Tone. JS in your project. You can add it via a script tag in your HTML. With Tone, JS, you can create synthesizers, load samples, and control audio flavor. Here's an example of creating a simple synthesizer and playing a note. Identify the parts of your code where you're using Web MIDI, JS, and determine what their equivalents would be in Tone, JS. Playing notes, replace MIDI note on, off commands with Tone, JS synthesizer or sampler triggered. Dynamic interaction, if you have dynamic MIDI interactions, like changing instruments or responding to MIDI input, consider how these will translate into Web Audio API actions using Tone, JS. 4. Mapping EEG data to musical parameters. With Tone, JS, you have a wide range of musical parameters to map your EEG data to. You can control pitch, duration, timbre, dynamics, and apply effect. Decide how you will map your EEG data to these parameters. 5. Advanced Features Explore Tone JS's advanced features like sequencing, effects, and more complex synthesizers if your application requires them. Example, dynamic sound generation based on EEG data. Here's a more specific example of how you might use Tone. JS to generate sound based on EEG data. 
In this example, map EEG value to frequency is a placeholder for your logic to convert EEG data to a frequency value. Okay, so I'm mostly having lots of trouble with MIDI files. I won't load into this player first. The generation is okay. I won't be able, wasn't even able to listen to it in uh, VLC. Did not work as well. Pretty annoying. Okay, this error message. Code it not supported. Could convert a MIDI into MP3. Okay, if we keep the current code, how to convert the MIDI file into MP3? Converting a MIDI file to an MP3 file involves a process that typically can't be done directly within a browser or a simple flask app, as it requires synthesizing the MIDI instructions into actual audio. This process is usually done on a server or with specialized software. Here's an overview of how you can achieve this. Yes, we would like to do it within Python. If you prefer to keep everything in Python, you might explore libraries like MIDI2 Audio for MIDI to WAV conversion and PYDUB for WAV to MP3 conversion. However, these still rely on external dependencies like Fluid Synth and FFmpeg. Yes, we would like to be using Python, how to change my code. To integrate MIDI to MP3 conversion into your Python Flask app, you need to use Python libraries that can handle the conversion. As mentioned earlier, MIDI2 Audio is a good option for converting MIDI to WAV, and PYDUB can be used for converting WAV to MP3. First, ensure you have the necessary dependencies installed. Install Fluid Synth. Fluid Synth is a software synthesizer that converts MIDI to audio. It's used by MIDI2 Audio. Why can't I just use the Python packages alone? So Python can't do it then. So why, why are you? The reason you need to install additional software like Fluid Synth and FFmpeg alongside the Python packages is due to the nature of audio processing tasks they perform, which are beyond the scope of simple Python package capabilities. Here's a breakdown of why these installations are necessary. Purpose. Fluid Synth is a real-time software synthesizer based on the SoundFont 2 specifications. It's used to convert MIDI files, which are essentially digital sheet music, into audible sound, WAV files. Why Python alone isn't enough, the conversion of MIDI to audio is a complex process that requires a sound synthesis engine, something that is not typically included in Python's standard library or simple packages. Fluid Synth is a specialized, optimized software for this purpose. Because that's also why VLC cannot play MIDI files? Yes, the reason VLC media player might struggle with playing MIDI files directly is related to the nature of MIDI files themselves and how media players interpret them. MIDI, musical instrument digital interface, files don't contain actual audio data. Instead, they contain digital instructions for music creation, like which notes are played, with what instrument, for how long, and at what volume. To convert these instructions into audible sound, a software synthesizer or sound font is required. So I thought they are in built the browser. Yeah, I don't have a sound font. Let me get a sound font from somewhere. That's what originally told me to do, but I was uh, struggling to find one that will work. There are JavaScript libraries, such as MIDI Player JS and Tone. Yes, that can parse MIDI files and play them in the browser using the Web Audio API. These libraries effectively add MIDI playback capability to web applications, but require some setup and programming. That's the one I was trying to use, but it also didn't work. That didn't work. Okay, we'll continue this next time. Thank you for watching. Tickle the algorithm. You know what to do. See you later. Bye.